Hello everybody, uh, my name's Michael Handlon. I'm a principal investigator at the Wellman Center for Further Medicine in uh, Massachusetts Hos General Hospital in Boston, uh, associate professor of dermatology at Harvard Medical School and a member of the affiliated faculty of Harvard MIT Division of Health Science and Technology. Um, my lab for the last 20 years has been studying the medical effects of light. So we study how light in combination with photosensitizing dyes can kill things. It can kill cancers, it can kill microbial infections or viruses or all the sort of nasty things that cause disease we can kill when we combine light with photosensitizers. And on the other side of the affair, we can treat all the other diseases that require stimulation. So if you don't have something nasty you want to kill, you have something that's failing, that's injured, that's degenerating, that's working at suboptimum levels, and there the light can stimulate it. So we use light alone, we use red or near infrared light of, of wavelengths in the 6 to 700 range or the 800 to 1000 nanometer range at relatively low levels. So this is levels that do not heat the tissue. Um, and you may ask, where are these, what are these photons doing? These photons are being absorbed by cytochrome C oxidase in the mitochondria. So all the living cells have mitochondria and the photons get absorbed by cytochrome C oxidase unit four. They dissociate nitric oxide and they set off a range of signaling uh, pathways, including release of nitric oxide, increase of ATP, cyclic AMP, and also a brief burst of reactive oxygen species. So these signaling pathways, in, in one sense, can be considered to be a very low level of cell stress. So although they're very good for the cells in the long run, in the short term, it's a brief period of stress that causes the cells to try and protect themselves by upregulating a whole lot of protective pathways like anti-apoptotic proteins and heat shock proteins and antioxidants. And not only that, but a lot of transcription factors are activated that, that go into the nucleus and cause the production of proteins that are responsible for cell proliferation, cell survival, cell migration, formation of new proteins. And one really interesting application of this, this um, what we call low-level light therapy, photobiomodulation, is in the brain. So it turns out if you shine near-infrared light onto the brain, onto the head, goes through the scalp, through the skull, and gets into the brain. And about 2% in humans of light you shine on the, on the scalp gets into the brain. And it can penetrate maybe one or two centimeters into the cortex. So all these stimulate, stimulating and healing uh, pathways that I just mentioned, if it happens in the brain, can have major effects. So, if you've had a stroke or a traumatic brain injury, obviously you need healing and repair in the brain. But if you have neurodegenerative diseases, which is going to be a big epidemic of Alzheimer's and Parkinson's and a lot of chronic neurodegenerative diseases could be benefited by stimulating the brain to repair itself. Psychiatric diseases could also be beneficially affected because the same processes that happen after a stroke or a traumatic brain injury, <clears throat> in other words, formation of new neurons, neurogenesis, formation of new connections between existing neurons, synaptogenesis, formation of neurotrophic factors like brain-derived neurotrophic factor, BDNF, and other factors that really benefit the brain. So the, basically the idea is that the light is causing the brain to repair itself. So if it's degenerating, if it's injured, or if it is disturbed in terms of its, its brain chemistry, a lot of people say that the reason 
people have psychiatric illness is that the brain chemistry is disturbed. And apparently, by using this light stimulation of the brain, the brain chemistry can be regularized. And, and the BDNF that I mentioned before is heavily involved in, in psychiatric disorders. In other words, increasing BDNF can benefit many of these um, men mental illnesses that, that the modern population is, uh, is prone to. And people who've looked at you know, big pharma and pharmaceuticals have realized that by and large, psychiatric drugs do not work terribly well, although they're a multi-billion dollar industry, that drugs for stroke and traumatic brain injury virtually don't exist. And there's a huge amount of effort to, turn, to find drugs for Alzheimer's disease because, as I said, there's going to be an epidemic. But you know, even though there are candidate drugs for Alzheimer's disease, nobody thinks they're going to be like magic bullets. So physical methods, and it's not like light therapy is the only one. We've, just heard talks about transcranial direct current or transcranial magnetic stimulation, but many of these physical therapies we believe could have major effects on all these brain disorders that, that, that the modern population is prone to and, and, and which are probably going to increase in incidence, especially as, as the population is getting older. Um, so I think, I think I'm probably done there and thank you very much.